Not too long ago, I did a video on how to diagnose electronic throttle bodies, and many of you wrote with one common question. What do you do when you install a new throttle body and the vehicle doesn't idle properly? Well, we're going to tackle that today on this edition of Cardone ProTech. Cardone ProTech series is produced in partnership with MotorAge, America's oldest trade publication for the automotive professional. Repairing today's vehicles is a lot more than just changing a part. It's imperative that you understand how all of these components work together to take care of engine management. And the person in charge is the ECM, or engine control module. The ECM by itself is just an assembly of parts that can't do anything on its own. It has to be told what to do or programmed. That programming involves a lot of if-then directives. What do I mean by that? Well, like I said, the ECM is programmed by the software engineers, but it can't carry out the programming unless it has the data that it needs to perform the calculations and carry out the duties that it's been assigned. This comes from the various engine management sensors. And when we're looking at electronic throttle bodies, some that immediately come to mind are the accelerator pedal position sensor, the mass airflow sensor, or the manifold absolute pressure sensor, maybe even a throttle position sensor, and others. Now it takes those uh, data points from these sensors, applies it to its programming, and then carries out whatever action it was directed to. In other words, the ECM is being told by the programmer if you see this, do this. And if you see that, do that instead. Make sense? The programming also makes allowances for normal wear and tear. The ECM actually learns as it goes along by comparing information from what's called a feedback sensor. Now that feedback sensor can be a variety of different sensors. It all depends on the original equipment manufacturer. But that feedback sensor's job is to let the ECM know that, hey, you know that adjustment that you just made and you were told to do it that way? Well, it's not quite right. You need to tweak it a little bit. And that's how the ECM learns, again, for normal wear and tear. And this is very important to understand for a couple of reasons. First, when replacing most actuators, it is necessary to let the ECM know that a new part has been installed so it can reset those learned adaptations. This is the relearn process you need to perform when you install a new component like the throttle body. Second, if you don't perform the relearn correctly, the ECM can't operate the new component correctly. Performing the relearn on an electronic throttle body can usually be done in one of two ways. One is a manual method. The other is using a factory or aftermarket equivalent scan tool to perform the relearn. Now, the manual method is the one typically used by a lot of professionals and most do-it-yourselfers because they don't have access to the scan tool they need to perform that particular task. And that can be a real challenge. Sometimes the steps are in a very precise order, and if you make just a minor mistake, the relearn process fails and you have to start all over again. And that can be extremely frustrating. But what's even more frustrating is when you've performed the manual relearn procedures to the letter and it still doesn't idle right. To better understand why some vehicles are harder than others when it comes to the relearn process, I reached out to the engineering team at Cardone. And what they told me made a lot of sense. They told me that in some cases, the adaptation values the ECM has learned have become so large that the ECM cannot simply relearn by manual method alone. It has to be done with a factory or aftermarket equivalent scan tool. And that, again, makes a lot of sense because today, the electronic throttle bodies are not the only actuators or components that you have to relearn using your scan tool. Here are some other examples. I'm sure many of you would understand why we would need to perform a crank sensor relearn if we change the sensor. But did you know that many OEMs now require you to relearn the crankshaft position sensor even after correcting a misfire? Failing to do so could affect how the ECM is able to detect future misfires. 
How about performing a relearn when you replace a fuel injector? And not just on certain GDI engines. Failing to do so could cause a fueling issue in the affected cylinder, and that can be a tough problem to isolate afterward. And how about something as simple as a battery replacement? Many OEMs now require you to tell the ECM when you change the battery, and failing to do so could cause the new battery to be damaged by an overcharge condition, and you'll likely be replacing it a lot sooner than you prefer. Sometimes there's just no getting around that you need to use the right tool for the job, in this case, the scan tool. So the next time you have a problem getting a new electronic throttle body to relearn, try that method and see if that doesn't take care of the issue for you. I'm Pete Meyer. Thanks for watching.